This is the story of a machine that started as plastic parts on a desk and became a spinning force powered only by air. It isn't loud, doesn't burn fuel, and won't lift planes off the ground. But it does something far more fascinating. It turns invisible wind into mechanical motion. And what's more impressive? It was made at home with a 3D printer. Every curve, every blade, every piece was crafted with intention. This isn't just about design. It's about persistence, simplicity, and the thrill of seeing your ideas finally move. Let's dive into the world of a home-built turbine. Beyond the surface. If you glance at it once, you'll think it's some kind of fan, or maybe a plastic jet engine model. But step closer, and the details come alive. Three stacked rotors, two steady stators, and a central shaft holding it all together. The rotors spin, the stators stand still. But they aren't just filler. They're the reason the whole system works. Without them, air would whip through uncontrollably. The secret lies in what air does between each layer, push, twist, and reset. The stators guide it back into line so the next rotor can keep spinning. That's the genius. It's not a motor. It's not even electric yet, but it's mechanical beauty. When it moves, it feels like magic. And what drives it isn't some complex code or circuit. It's air, just air. But getting there takes more than good theory. It takes parts, a lot of them, shaping wind with plastic. Before it ever spun, it had to exist. And that meant printing. Each rotor and stator wasn't bought off a shelf. It was born from filament, layer by layer. The blades were made to be light, but sturdy. Each wall is thick enough to hold under pressure, but not so dense that it wastes material. Even the housing had to be printed just right, tight enough to keep everything steady, but smooth enough so nothing scraped. It's a balancing act every maker knows. Strength without bulk, precision without perfection. Mistakes happened, rough edges, a bit too snug. Some sanding fixed that. And every retry made it better. When all the pieces finally came together, it wasn't just a stack of plastic. It was a machine. Not silent, not flawless, but ready. And there was only one way to find out what it could do. Test it. But testing air-powered motion without air? That's the next challenge. The first breath of motion. No compressor, no turbine. That was the first limitation. So the project packed up and traveled somewhere with proper airflow. Once connected, the turbine spun, not in theory, but in reality. The sound was crisp and clean, a whisper of speed. This wasn't just a prototype, but moving proof that the design worked. There was no fancy gauge or RPM reader, but you could hear the success. It didn't vibrate. It didn't jam, just pure spin. The machine came alive after weeks of planning, printing, assembling, and tweaking. For anyone watching, it might have seemed small, but to the builder, it was a triumph. Still, good results bring new questions. Could this spin do more? Could it generate electricity? Could it work? That's the thing with builds like this. The goal isn't to finish, it's to push further. And pushing further meant turning air into power, measurable, usable power. Air in, power out. A spinning turbine means nothing if it can't transfer energy. That's where the stepper motor came in. Normally used to move 3D printer parts, it now played a new role as a generator. Hooked up to the turbine shaft, it spun as the rotors turned. It wasn't hard to see. This thing was working, but there was more, a plug, a full bridge rectifier. Now that spinning shaft sends current through a circuit. DC voltage, light bulb stuff, not enough to run a fridge, but enough to prove a point. Air spins blades, blades spin the shaft, the shaft powers the generator. And with that loop, motion becomes electricity. For a machine made entirely in someone's home workshop, that's a victory, a small current maybe, but big momentum. And with more air pressure, maybe even bigger potential. But before scaling up, airflow had to be handled better. 
The intake design was next on the table. Designing airflow. Good airflow doesn't just happen. The first idea was six tubes, one for each hole on the front lid. It looked clever, but air doesn't like being told where to go. It resisted. The turbine struggled. It was the wrong kind of chaos. That plan got scrapped fast. Then came something better. Air channels are built right into the lid. Now the turbine didn't rely on tubes or junctions. The air flowed directly and evenly. First try, decent. Second try, much better. One of the lids pushed the turbine to over 5,000 RPM. Another one barely scratched 1,500. That's how sensitive airflow is. Tiny changes make huge differences. And when dealing with spinning machines, that's everything. The takeaway? Never underestimate design details. Even a simple curve or angle can differentiate between spin and stall. With better airflow dialed in, it was time to revisit something bold. Could it handle water? The water test. This machine was never meant for water, but that didn't stop the experiment. A hose, a steady stream, and a transparent turbine to watch it all unfold. Water rushed through the casing, but the blades didn't budge. Not even a wobble. It confirmed what was already expected. Water isn't air. It's heavier, slower, and harder to guide. The blade's shape and the rotor's spacing were just not right for liquid. But the failure was beautiful. Watching the water swirl inside, bouncing off the stators, flowing past the still rotors, became an art piece. Functional or not, it showed something rare, a window into invisible motion. If nothing else, it sparked a new idea. Maybe another version, different shapes, a liquid-based turbine someday. For now, air remained the true power source. And with every test, air or water, the design kept evolving. The journey wasn't over, not even close. Solving the noise problem. After the first spins, a faint clicking sound crept in. Something was brushing, barely, but enough to matter. The source? Tiny imperfections left by the printer. Corners, not quite flush. Edges are a little rough. It wasn't a flaw in the idea. It was a reality of DIY manufacturing. So came the drill test. Spin it fast. Let friction do the work. It helped, but not enough. So out came the sandpaper manual adjustments. Slowly, the sound faded. It was never gone completely, but that's okay. The turbine didn't need silence. It needed consistency. That sound told a story, not of failure, but of persistence, of chasing performance in a world where perfection isn't always possible. In the end, it wasn't about making it flawless. It was about making it function, and every sound that faded was one step closer to success. The transparent upgrade. The original housing worked, but it hid the magic inside. Enter the transparent shell. It is not 3D printed at home, but a sponsor makes it with pro-level precision. It changed everything. Now, each test has become a performance, watching the blades spin, seeing the air twist through layers. It added a new layer of understanding. The visual confirmed what the numbers hinted at, and it wasn't just beautiful, it was educational. A window into the invisible mechanics of motion. For viewers, it made the process tangible. For the builder, it offered a chance to spot flaws, improve flow, and rethink shape. Engineering is often hidden inside casings and code, but this build wore its process proudly. Clear walls, clear lessons, and with every test filmed through that shell, the turbine story came alive in a new way. Unexpected learnings. This wasn't a school project. It wasn't for sale. It was curiosity, made real. And that's what made every problem a gift. From bolts that didn't fit to air that refused to cooperate, each setback revealed something new, like how tightly a rotor should fit, or how airflow fights back when forced into tubes even the staters, those silent heroes, needed exact positioning. Too loose, they spun. Too tight, they scraped. Each part taught its lesson. 
In a way, the turbine wasn't just a machine. It was a teacher. It showed how precision matters, how simplicity beats complexity, and how testing matters more than theory. Because watching something fail tells you more than reading about what works. That's the real heart of DIY, not the finish line, but the learning along the way. What comes next? Now that it spins and powers a motor, what's next? The dream isn't just to make it faster, it's to make it useful. Could it charge batteries? Could it run off solar-powered air pumps? Could a mini version run in classrooms, teaching airflow to kids? The possibilities spiral outward like the blades inside. And maybe one day, someone else will take this idea, print their own, and improve it. That's what open designs do. They evolve. And the future of this turbine? It doesn't belong to one maker. It belongs to anyone who sees, builds, and improves it. Behind every 3D print is something more powerful than plastic, creativity. And that's what truly spins the world forward. Spinning forward. What started with plastic turned into motion, and motion sparked inspiration. This turbine isn't just a finished product, it's a beginning. A glimpse of what's possible when you mix design, failure, and raw curiosity. With every spin, new questions emerge. What if it's scaled up? What if it's hybrid powered? In a world chasing clean energy, even small creations matter. And this one? It's already moving in the right direction. From a stack of printed parts to a humming, spinning machine, this turbine's journey was more than just engineering. It was exploration. It taught patience, rewarded persistence, and lit up with more than just air. If you've ever built something, struggled through it, and finally saw it work, you know this feeling. It's magic, baby, hands. And if you're new to this world, let this turbine be a doorway. Because every rotor, every bolt, every misaligned part is a step toward understanding. Thanks for watching, and if this inspired you, maybe it's time you printed your future. See you next time.